Okay, what's going on, guys? I this is Swift and Cake with a another episode. Um, I just have the tournament we were just at playing in the background without sound, so you guys don't get too bored. But you don't have to watch it either. You can just listen. But yeah, so Cake and I were actually just at a burst tournament, which sounds crazy for us. I know. Um, it was a team burst event, and then Metal Fight Limited. It was Team Palooza invitational that is ran by it was ran by ja industries but he was doing it for uh beyblade Premier, which is out of orlando florida so i wanted to get started by saying cake never played like he, he played burst up until what was it like dual layer yeah uh like just when chosey was starting so like yeah I, my last time playing burst standard was in anime north 2018 which, funnily enough, was also team format. <laughs> so, yeah, that it was kind of funny because I went to explain team format to him and he was like, oh, I already know what's going on. And I was like, oh, good to know. But uh, yeah, so since you haven't played since then, um, let alone launched anything heavier than like a, a dual layer, basically, what were your thoughts on Burst DB, the latest standard stuff? Yeah, getting getting used to launching with the new launchers and the much, much heavier Beyblades was very different. It really actually did hurt my wrist uh, the day after I was really feeling that. Uh, <laughs> the gearing is so much higher than, you know, Metal Fight uh, launchers or the early burst string launchers. And then that combined with, you know, long string still plus extremely heavy beyblades is really something different to get used to like you don't pull anywhere near as fast as you do in metal fight because you don't need to and it'll cause problems if you try and do it because you can't maintain any kind of control yeah uh, that's that's the thing you can't launch as hard as you can really in burst yeah so i i really had to learn to rein it in a little bit and but then would still get great results out of it, clearly. Uh, yeah, that was definitely a big thing to get used to. Yeah, so I, I noticed from when, when I was uh, putting together the footage from the Burst event, I, I thought it was kind of funny because I think it was every single one of your matches, you completely messed up the first launch. So you always started 0-1 and one yep. from a missed launch, and then you you made the, the sweep back. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Um but what what did you think about the actual like DB system, like how the the Beyblades interact, um, like their burst resistance, that kind of stuff? Yeah, during during some downtime, I pulled one apart because again, I haven't I haven't handled any of them really uh, since <laughs> dual layer, um, and I kind of I think the assembly method is kind of cool with just. I don't even know any of the part names. Just how, how everything fits together is kind of neat. How they slipped in all the extra metal and stuff to make it work. Um, as far as burst resistance goes, uh, I'm not really a fan of the burst mechanic in general. So bursting being mostly a non-factor is a plus in my book. Um yeah, I, I liked not needing, to, as opposed to the last time I played, not needing to worry about when I play attack, just my own combo blowing up at the slightest provocation. That's pretty nice, because <laughs> then I can just focus on playing the game and uh, launching my attack type well and getting KOs instead of being like, oh man, am I going to blow up? Yeah, I, I, I think that DB, what I like about it is that, that obviously we did have a couple bursts, but they're very rare and generally... Um, it's not very RNG, if that makes sense. Like, 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 at least when you last played, like, the classic era, era um, like, random bursts would happen. And I, I know a lot of people didn't like that just because you would be in, like, a 100% winning matchup, but then you'd randomly burst, uh, where yes. that doesn't really happen. Um, Especially you, with yeah. part wear then versus now. Yep. Like, yeah. the stuff would just wear out, and then the RNG would be less and less and less in your favor. And right, so matchups yeah. that should have been winning turn into losing matchups within a couple rounds just because of tooth wear. <laughs> which which would drive me nuts. I'm happy I wasn't around for that that part of burst. But um yeah, so I think one of the things that really appeals to me about burst, which is why I got back into it, 
was actually how good and viable attack was. Because if any of you guys don't know, Metal Fight Standard is not very loved. Um, a lot of people hate on it mainly because there's RDF, disc tracks, heavy synchroms, and uh, there are good attack combos, don't get me wrong, but they're just really not as safe as uh, like in Burst Standard where I'd say attack is very safe and guilty could, is pretty meta-defining, honestly. Yeah, in, in Metal Fight Standard, attack is really busted, but defense is even more busted is the problem. Uh, versus in Burst, I'm still not qualified enough to say why, but apparently rubber tip defense isn't really a thing. So it's stuff like I was basically handed as Swift described it to me, uh, I'm I'm getting Lightning El Drago, and it sure looked like my Lightning El Drago that I normally use in limited, uh, a silver, white, and blue dragon that has a whole lot of attack, <laughs> uh, right, right. stuck on rubber flat or extreme dash in this case, um, and yeah, a guilty longinus hurts. Uh, <laughs> there were there were many uh, bruised knuckles from that thing, and I, I did watch you uh, launch it onto a kid's hand on accident. <laughs> Oh, I felt so bad about that. Yeah, that was that was kind of an oof. But yeah, so I'm 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 happy that you had fun. If anybody hasn't seen the tournament, uh Cake was part of my team MF Boomers. It was Cake, Lil Street, and me. And we ended up winning. Um Cake went undefeated. I lost one. Um but yeah, we, we won the whole burst team tournament, which was kind of funny. But yeah, I, th I I had a pretty good time and I hope you did too, Cake. Yeah, it, it it was fun. And then uh really quick here um I, I I personally know but if you wanted to explain your thoughts on 3v3 which is the format we use throughout the whole burst tournament. Yeah, so I I like team format. I do not like 3v3. Uh 3v3 is one of my least favorite formats, though I guess we only have really four. Um, mm. or maybe five if the five G thing goes through. But um uh three V three, especially because it's blind pick, is has like huge problems in my opinion. Like uh being blind pick and then you can only use each combo once until reshuffle really kills the ability to counter pick your opponent. Like it's still there, but only barely. Versus in pick three, choose one, or in deck format, you see the entire deck beforehand, and you can say, okay, I have this combo, which is good against your whole deck, and if your deck doesn't have really good coverage against, like, about everything, you will get punished for that eventually. Um, and so then there's, like, decisions that you can make, because, like, you can, might think, okay, they're not going to maybe bring this, so I'm going to, you know, build my deck assuming that they don't have that. Uh, versus in 3v3, you've got blind pick, and you use each slot once. And so it kind of almost doesn't matter what you do. Like, it, you've got it's kind of a coin toss in a lot of ways, with the win or loss usually being determined by who launches better more consistently. And then um, uh, th there, there are some, some talks. Some people would like if it wasn't blind pick. So if you revealed the three Beyblades you were going to use first and then choose the order. Yeah, that's a massive improvement already. Yep, I think um, so too. Yeah. I think then the other advantage that some people quote for 3v3, or maybe I don't, I don't know if it's just me uh, <laughs> saying this is an advantage, but 3v3 does limit the amount that you can exploit one really broken combo because again you can only use it uh, after reshuffle a maximum of twice so you can only get two of your three wins with the same combo uh, but again by that same note that kind of also means that it reduces your ability to again counterpick people with the same combo over and over and over again regardless of whether or not that combo is like super broken or not. And I think it maybe hides balance problems with the format itself. Like if you say 3v3 is good in X format, that immediately sets off alarm bells in my head that this format has a serious problem with one combo being overpowered. Right. 
Um, I, I, I will quickly just say that uh, I really don't like 3v3 for Metal Fight. I don't mind it as much in Burst just because everything's really good. I mean, Burst tends to be LAD Wars and then Attack because there's really no solid KO defense. So in 3v3, I feel like it's a lot less you're screwed, if that makes sense, um, than it would be in like Metal Fight. Yeah, and like especially with the deck that you gave me, I felt like it almost didn't matter which matchups I was landing in because I had options to adjust my launch to win regardless of what the matchup was. Right, y y your weakest link was the, the Roar Bahamut on Metal Drift, and that's because it was only good for opposite spin, which you did, you got very lucky in the one match that you did have same spin against Roar on Zone Dash plus Z, uh, you ended up. You guys both went crazy, and you KO'd him, which you would have lost if not. Yeah, that was KO'd. that was awkward. Yeah, so uh, that that was pretty awesome, but uh, yeah. So I guess let's let's move on from burst. Because what, one more thing that I oh, almost forgot ahead. to mention. Uh, another issue that I had with three v three is unlike in deck format or in pick three choose one, you can bring a combo that you don't use, versus in three v three you have to use each combo. So you're no really, blocking. yeah, and, and also in 3v3, you can't really bring specialist combos. Like, if you have, like, one combo that really just easily beats this one meta combo, you can't really bring that in 3v3 because it, what if you don't put it into the slot that your opponent has their meta combo in? You really want to put three combos that are good versus a whole bunch of stuff into all three slots. So that kind of limits your ability to build decks in 3v3. Yeah, for sure. So... Moving on to what we were probably more excited for for this weekend was Metal Fight Limited. Now, we actually had a pretty good turnout. I think our biggest turnout ever um, since building up the Midwest scene. We had 16 players. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, so we, we played Group Round Robin, uh, which is where you have two different groups. And then in each of those groups, everybody plays each other in their respected groups. Uh, which I think was, what, seven matches, I, I believe? Yep, for, seven for matches. Yep. So that was that was really good fun. I felt like um, the tournament ran a little faster than it usually does. I feel like we did good about keeping matches constantly going. Um, it helped yeah. that we had, like, Rager and Try and other people who could help judge, which uh, made it to kind of eased up the load on both Jay and Magic. So I thought that was really cool. Did you did you have any uh, thoughts on on uh, the limited event that happened? Yeah, I'd agree that we kept things moving pretty well there, uh, especially compared to running teams before, where we had all the judges on like two teams, and so when they right. were playing, we couldn't. <laughs> yeah, we we wanted to have another stadium running, but a lot of the times we can't. And I I, I believe that I, I read in Deceased Crab's tournament report something similar happened in Maryland, where they really only had two out of their three stadiums running or whatever so yeah i thought i thought that was kind of annoying for the team tournament but nothing you can really do so let's see we had quite a few like new people there that um are generally burst players that were playing mfb and i will say they did pretty good and they did pretty good with attack yeah, so I didn't, uh, unlike usual, where I often spend a lot of time watching other people play, uh, this time around I spent most of my time uh, coaching one of the new people on yes, their Killian, Metal Fight combos and lending out. Michigander. Yeah, yeah, so I, I spent most of my time helping them out with building some combos and lending out parts for them because they didn't have any Metal Fight with them. So... <laughs> Yeah, uh, and they ended up beating me and yep, they taking made it fourth. To finals. Yeah, that was that was crazy because um, you weren't at the 4D event at, in South Bend a couple months back, but they were actually there for the Burst GT tournament, and then they also participated in 4D borrowing some of Magic stuff, and their launch was terrible. So to like this last weekend, they improved so much, <laughs> like. Like, if you could have seen them in 4D, you would have been like, this is a lost cause. But, wow, they did very good, and they were also just very pleasant 
so um yeah that 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 always even after i hit him with guilty longinus yep, even after you did hit him with guilty longinus uh, i guess that was the least you could do which was coach him and uh lend him some parts but yeah he ended up doing very good um he really liked using that screw h145 uh he used rubber flat first i believe then he switched the metal flat is that correct yeah, for most of the tournament, he was using, um, I forgot if I gave him a Metal Face. I think Metal Face Heavy, yep, yep, it Screw was, Aquario, yeah. uh, and then we went between, for most of the tournament, it was on GB145, MF, or RF, mostly MF. And then for finals, then I lent him H145, which immediately broke, probably because <laughs> I'd been spamming yeah, it. Yeah, it immediately broke, um, but it, you guys will see, it's actually in this tournament, he he KOs Flame too. He and in fact he also beat your brother with that combo, um, which I thought was pretty funny. But yeah, he and beat me. two Flame two thirty combos. So, oh yeah, he beat you too. So yeah, I lost the attack ditto. That was luck, but yeah. <laughs> Still, that 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 <laughs> I'm was gonna funny. say it, it. That was lucky, but yeah, uh, it was funny nonetheless. Right, and then we had three players from Wisconsin show up, which was really awesome. So we we've had Joe Kip come before, generally mainly just a burst player. We got him into metal fight and you'll be happy to hear this cake. He, he DM'd me after the tournament, like the next day saying he likes metal fight limited now more than burst. So, Hey, hey let's go. But yeah, so we had three players, I believe Ross cat blader and then Joe Kip. They all came from um, their respected area of Wisconsin. And not to say that the MF boomers uh, destroyed them, but in the team format, we, we kind of destroyed them, but in Metal Fight, Joe Kip ended up actually taking second place. Um, and this was only, I believe, his second Metal Fight tournament ever. And he he told me over DMs, like, every day for, like, three days up until the event that he was going to win or he was going to make it to finals is what he said. And then when he got to the tournament and uh, lost to us in burst, he told me Metal Fight is going to be different. And I'm happy that he held true to that promise. Oh, yeah. Because he uh he ran shoot what was he was running Jay's original lightning combo which was lightning El Drago H one forty five metal flat yeah lots of H one forty five metal flat today <laughs> yeah and it was it was honestly doing really good though <laughs> so um yeah and then uh the third the person who got third place was Mister Power who is also a new metal fight player who came from Burst which was really cool. And he was one of the few people that was actually repping the Bakushin 85 metal flat combo. Um, I stopped using it currently because there's been a lot of counters in our area to it. I know that you experimented with uh, Bakushin 85 whole flat. How did that go for you? Yeah, so in my usual uh, attempting to use jank shenanigans, I popped, I was looking at Bakushin for a variety of things, and I ended up using it on 85 whole flat with the intention being to be shorter than normal. And also because I was lending out the only metal flat that I have that wasn't broken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and that worked mostly. Uh, I did, as usual for 85 plus short plastic tip, it did scrape. But I still managed to uh, squeeze out a win with it. You got uh, three KOs some... on media. Yeah. Cheeky KOs on Medio. And they were uh, very convincing KOs, like very hard hitting. Yeah, uh, Medio's underside is very recoily, and Bakushin has a little bit of teeth to it. So And it gets right under that underside, so. Yeah, especially when you're at minimum height possible. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I th I thought that was really cool. I I could tell that Magic Horse was really shocked when, <laughs> when he got beat by that, because he did not think that that would win. Um which it ended up winning. So that was cool. Maybe maybe on 90 it would be better. But I, I what yeah. I what I did notice about whole flat which I liked more than metal flat was you you seem to be able to get a more consistent flower. Uh l l like um you know with metal flat a lot of times it will like rev up for a while and then go into the flower. I felt like whole flat kind of just went right into the flower. Yeah, and that was a, that was a pretty new whole flat too. I was trying to make sure that I was using a good one. Um and yeah, it, it performed nicely. Yeah. So, okay. Here was another point that I want to talk to when I, I just looked up at my screen and saw the tournament going. Almost every match had an attack type in use. So, 
Uh, I, I know I thought it was kind of ironic because this tournament was named after Think, which is a WBO staff member who is known known for years that to be a very attack heavy user. So this tournament was called Think Differently. And I just thought it was funny that most people didn't even know who he was, but they were all using attack anyway. So did you did you want to talk about that at all? About just the uh, sheer amount of attack we saw used? Oh, I don't know. Uh, like our local meta here in the Midwest is tends to be pretty attack heavy to begin with, but even by that standard, this was yeah, lots and lots and lots of attack. This this was uh, crazy. Plenty of attack via attack too. There was a yeah, and one thing that that I was very shocked about because metal fight, as you know, is a lot different launching than burst, and a lot of these kids were using like R two F and rubber flat, and they were not self KOing. Sure, we had a lot of self KOs, but that wasn't just by the new players. It was also by us more veteran players. So which which you're gonna get that when every match has an attack type. But I was very shocked on how controlled a lot of these people were um getting their attack types. All right, let me check. So were there any weird combos that you went up against in the tournament? Um, not that I can really think of. Uh, I helped make some weird combos, like uh, my brother uh, Basalt Spam was running uh, Chrome Up Balro as one of his attackers. Oh yeah, I remember that. And I think he blew up a 230 combo with it. Yeah, I, I saw him using that. I think it was when you guys first got to the tournament, and I was laughing until I realized that Balro hits up pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's funny, like, haha, Balro bad, Chrome up bad. <laughs> well, not Balro bad, but, like, nobody uses it over Wivang, but, you know. Right. Uh, upper attack go burr. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, speaking of your brother, I thought it was funny. So, you, as you know, I generally build my combos, and then I just, I never switch my deck up the whole tournament. That's how it has basically gone all the past tournaments but your brother's kind of a wild card to me because he i've only played against him i think in one tournament so i know he likes to use attack types and i know he, he he's a thinker kind of like you so he he even admitted that he built his deck to counter me of uh, the stuff that i was using so i remember i went to my my uh box with try and i made gravity perseus f230 gcf because i knew he had never seen that before and I ended up being able to beat him with it, which I thought was pretty funny because he, he was like, what is that? Yeah, actually, I think we had more F-230 than like ever before in this tournament, too. I think there were yeah. at least three instances of get, it getting used, and that's just what I saw, and I wasn't watching that much. Yeah, I wasn't watching all of them. Um, but yeah, I, I did notice. I don't, I don't use it a lot because it is pretty vulnerable, especially in our area. But I, I guess I just... Uh, I, I, Tried to broaden my horizon a little bit more this tournament, experimenting with uh, parts like building combos how you normally do, because um, I also played against Mr. Power in the semifinals, and I pulled out the Wombat combo. I'm not sure if Wombat was the one who made this, but it's the Gravity Perseus Stamina 85 Rubber Ball. So I knew that Mr. Power had been running Jade on Coat Sharp almost the whole tournament, uh, flame 230 and then a bakushin metal flat combo so i subbed out my earth 90 cs for gravity perseus uh, metal face heavy 85 rubber ball and in the first match i pulled it out i was able to ko his jade actually i was in left spin i was able to ko the jade because gravity was able to get under jade's underbelly yeah, it's a very low hanging guy. Yep. And so he rematched me. And this is what I was really interested was if I could outspin because try asked, like, why are you using rubber ball? And I was like, well, it can outspin CS like LAD wise. And I was able to pretty convincingly outspin it, which I, I could tell scared him. Um, he did pull out uh, his Bakushin metal flat combo. But luckily, gravity is one of those short ones that can like get under or get low enough on Bakushin to where it can go either way. So he did KO me once, but I was able to launch even harder the next round in the rematch 
and uh, KO him to win the match. So I was really impressed by how versatile uh, Gravity Perseus 85 RB was. Yeah, it's funny that uh, you brought that up because uh, I hadn't even seen, uh, like, before you had even used it in tournament, uh, I'd been talking with Basalt Spam and also thinking about myself using short Gravity RB uh, just as a defensive alternative to combos like Bakushin or Jade, because I was kind of looking to mix things up, and uh, it's it's useful for, as you said, it can get under things that most combos can't and KO them, while also being pretty defensive. Yeah, so, yeah. It's a pretty versatile combo because gravity, you know, hits really hard, and then it also has that spin ceiling capabilities, and especially in deck where you can switch the um, spin direction once. Um, it's just it's pretty good because you can weak launch it so where it's not aggro and tank hits, or you can hard launch with your rubber ball and kind of be an attack type, you know. So yeah, yeah, I, I really like the combo, and I I think I might add it to my arsenal to use some more because it worked really well, especially in opposite spin against Jade, which I was very happy about. Um, because Je unless it's I'm going against Cake who uses rubber ball on Jade, a lot of people either use RS or mainly RS, I think. But so yeah, I'd like I was I was thinking about using it, but I kind of chickened out because for the most part, I'm I feel like I'm one of the only people who uses Jade either here or anywhere else. Like, right. uh, so beating Jade wasn't a super useful thing, I thought. But in your case, it, it was the combo to use for that scenario <laughs> you were in. Right, which which is pretty awesome, and I'm I am actually interested to see how it would go against Jade on Rubber Ball, where uh like maybe it would tie or who knows, but yeah. So there was another thing I wanted to talk about, and that was Bandit Pegasus. So I'm not sure. Did you see any of the matches I used it in? I think I saw a little bit of one. Okay, so I I use it in. My very first match in first stage against a gravity on circle flat combo and was able to win. Uh, I think it, it was kind of it was kind of luck. It wasn't any like super convincing wins. It was just kind of they clashed and then mine would stay in longer because it had, you know, rubber. Yeah, um, I think that was the one I saw, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. And then the other time I used it was in the finals against Jokip. And I actually got three out of my five points against him using that combo. I was able to beat. Pegasus R145 RF in the attack ditto, um, which we both flat launched and went around the ridge and I was able to KO him. Then I also beat was able to beat his Lightning El Drago H145 Metal Flat combo, which uh, I was also kind of, I guess not that surprised about. But it is Metal you know, Flat. Yeah, but Pegasus is also like bad, like bad against attack. But um, the one thing I was pretty... um pretty happy with was i i had tricked joe kit by making a co a comment when uh i chose pegasus i muttered under my breath saying this is good against flame 230 just so he wouldn't counter pick flame 230 to go <laughs> against it so i i said that and i saw him like move his hand to grab a different beyblade and i was like thank god because from our testing i'm pretty sure it was with you and polo i believe um that was flame 230 is the one that it really struggles against but when he finally did pull out Flame 230, I got a KO on it right away, which I was pretty impressed with. Like, I was, like, the reach on Pegasus is kind of insane to me. You bluffed yourself. <laughs> yeah, I was, I don't know. I, I thought it was a pretty good showing. I, I've had more um, success with Pegasus, uh, Zero G Pegasus than I have with Y Vang and Limited now. So, I don't know. I, I think I really do like it more than Y Vang and Limited, to be honest. Yeah, and I was I was looking at other chrome wheel combos, uh, namely Bagyrados and Phoenix. Phoenix, but I ended up chickening out and not really using either of them. Right, and and Try actually asked me if Phoenix was better than Pegasus, and I said no, just because I know Phoenix one of the lightest ones, right? Yeah, I think Phoenix in general is a lot like. Um, pre-hybrid pegasus in that it's powerful but extremely recoily right and 
And so I ended up just using Pegasus R145 later, and that worked out great. Yeah, you had some pretty good success with Pegasus and, and attack. You used a lot of attack um, this tournament. You used that low lightning combo against me. That gave me a heart attack, by the way. Yeah, I still need to play better in the mind games where there's a right option and a wrong option and, you know, properly double switcheroo people to <laughs> get around right. not picking the obvious option but i always expect other people to do that and then <laughs> they don't right um yeah so i i thought that was pretty cool earth cs still holding its own but um let's move on to part breaks maybe the most sad part of this podcast so for any of you guys who didn't know there was a catastrophic amount of part breaks at this last tournament. I know Jay lost an H145. Mr. Power lost a CH120. Cake lost an H145 and almost a metal flat. Um, and those two were on the same combo. <laughs> and then who else? Uh, Basalt had his coat sharp knocked off into the concrete, but oh. it lived mostly. Okay, good. Okay, and then I know that uh, Cat Blader, his uh, Joe Kip's lightning hit his whatever lightning on R two F onto the cement. There was just it was uh, just terrible. Like it was like every other battle, you just hear no. And oh, and uh, during uh, practice, uh, I had to put together a F two thirty that came apart. Oh no! Was it a Hasbro one at least? Yeah, it was a Hasbro. It, it okay. had just gotten unscrewed. It'd been used in left spin or whatever and that can okay unscrew yeah it. for sure yeah there was more part breaks actually than i've ever seen before so it got me really wanting to host where, where uh i'm hosting in october i'm happy that it's grass i'll just say that um it, it's gonna be we'll have to all get used to playing on top of the tables but i think it's it sure beats losing a lot of parts on the grass or on the cement Really, I just need to buy like a whole bunch of those foam tiles. Yeah, that 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 would be the best thing. I I gave them the J. I don't know where they're at. Um, he didn't bring them this time, but yeah, I'll, I'll next time I buy some, I'll probably just keep them for myself. I just didn't want to have to haul them back and forth to uh, all of his yeah. tournaments. But yeah, the the foam tiles are a huge huge uh, help. So. Was there anything else that you noticed in either the burst tournament or the um, metal fight tournament that you wanted to talk about? I'm I'm quickly gonna shout out um, Conse Seven. I believe he is the owner of Beyblade Premier. He was the prize support for this tournament. So just huge thanks to him. That's really cool that he's doing all that for his or for all the WBO organizers. Uh yeah, I think that's about it. That's about it. Okay. I'm I'm just trying to think if there was anything else that happened. Um I guess so I so I somehow won the limited event again. Um just a recoup, and then we won burst standard together, which was really cool. Yeah, um, I was hoping, and think was talking to me too. We were really hoping that you were going to be like sold on burst, but we're still working on you. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. You haven't you, got me yet. You never know. You're getting xiphoid in the mail. I think Conse said he shipped him out today. So you already have the Y Vang for burst. So might as well run with it, man. <laughs> but. Yeah, I I think. Oh yeah, really quick because we don't we don't want to have to have a whole episode. So we a couple months ago we went to Anime North. Um, I played Burst Standard. I did pretty poorly. That's actually why I got back into Burst because I think I had what I had to buy two stock combos when I got there. Yeah, <laughs> just just the just the play and um, I got went three and bug. two. Yeah, and I really wanted to do better, and that's I got hit by the bug. I was just like, wow, like doing so poorly. Um. Which I guess Zanky said three and two wasn't even that bad, but compared to what I'm used to, that was pretty a crushing defeat. So I ended up going out and buying a whole bunch of burst stuff, and now I'm pretty hooked. But 
yeah, we basically just enjoyed the convention for the most part and had a great time. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully they bring back Metal Fight next year. That would be fantastic. And then uh, I will be going to Beyblade East next week, ne- next weekend, the 26th. Unfortunately, Kate can't go, Polo can't go now, and JA and Power can't go. So it's like the whole crew can't go now besides me. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah. And McFabboy 10 is flying in. So, um, but I will try to represent the Midwest well and take their BR. <laughs> so go take home the Bay Point. Yeah. So, and for any of you guys who don't know, this uh, tournament right here, uh, Beyblade East, is going to have every Metal Fight format um, over the course of two days. So two tournaments a day. Including 4D. Including 4D. So expect a lot of tournament footage, just a lot of probably random videos. I'm going to get to meet a whole bunch of people. Really excited. I really wish that Kate could come, but obviously, as an adult, he has other things going on. So Beyblade comes second to family. It's killing me. <laughs> but we will have to to organize. Maybe we can get with more preparation. We can get like Beyblade Midwest um, next year going. And then this is also, I'm sorry, I keep thinking of things. I, I wanted to tell you, Cake, but I, I forgot. Um, I was messaging Dan, and he said that if you and I go up there next summer anytime, um, maybe just even just for like a day or two, they'll host a whole pl- uh, plethora of metal fight tournaments in our name. In our honor nice so maybe we got to do that sometimes next summer because that would be fun to go and play mfb with the toronto crew for sure but i think that is everything um yeah uh thank oh, you guys final oh, go ahead. final words uh all, I, even with all the breaks and getting beaten by a, a kid that i was coaching it's <laughs> worth it to get more people in the middle fight it it is so worth it and the amount of people that that left really liking metal fight. That was awesome. So fully worth the breaks. And I, and I gave you an H one forty five. So yeah. 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 Shout out to Swift here, (laughs) (laughs) but all right. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this and we will see you next time.